Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Two Minute Tuesday. Today I want to talk about a, I don't know if we should call this one a secret, but it's one of those not very well known capabilities in Dynamics 365. And what we're talking about is the ability to use non-interactive user accounts. And you know, maybe we should start by talking about what that is in case you haven't heard about this before. Essentially, every single Dynamics 365 customer, or I would say perhaps even a model-driven application customer, maybe not using the primary apps from Dynamics 365, has the ability to create up to seven user accounts that are to be used for not really user typical activities, meaning no one will be logging in with this user account and doing work, but actually we use them for data integrations. Like how many times have you been in a project and perhaps on your current implementation, your current solution, where you're paying every month full price for a user that is being used for data integrations. It doesn't make any sense. So what Microsoft decided to do, and this has been around for years and years and years, they allow us to create user accounts that we don't have to pay for whatsoever and we can use for our integrations. These user accounts can write into CDS or your Dynamics 365 database if you wanna think about it that way. You can read from it. It works pretty much like a regular user account, but we don't pay for them at all. They're awesome, so let's go ahead and create one. So in this case, I'm going to navigate to active users and as you can see, I am at the Microsoft 365 admin center and to get there you can just go to admin.microsoft.com is the easiest way to do that so obviously everything i'm about to do i'm doing as a system administrator not only that i'm actually a global administrator at my office 365 tenant so i'm going to go ahead and add a user in here and then we can go ahead and use whatever we want in this case i'm going to call it crm and the last name integrations why not so crm integrate let's just call it crm integration and then obviously again if you have an integration for an erp system let's just say maybe you want to use that name and then if you have another integration let's say for a licensing server or something like that you may use that name for that other server so go ahead and um, enter that in and we're just going to call this guy crm CRM add, you know, Gus 0620 of that on Microsoft.com, whatever that is. And we're going to go ahead and create a password. Or you can auto generate a password, whatever you want. The one in this one that, you know, you have to look for is obviously password expirations and things like that. If that is hard coded into your integration, then you're going to have some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter a password here. So. Obviously, you can require the user to change the password when they first sign in. Uh, you can send the password in an email, all that good stuff that you're used to. But I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now, there are two steps. Well, actually, three steps that we have to do in order to complete the creation of a non-interactive user account. Now, I didn't start the countdown creating the user because... It's kind of like, I mean, you have to have a user to begin with. It's not part of the process. But now that we're going to start with the three steps, I'm going to start the countdown and let's go. So the first step to create a non-interactive user account is to actually assign a license. Now, I happen to have 24 licenses available, so that's not going to be a problem. Now, you may have a problem if all your licenses are accounted for. However, in some tenants, in some instances, I've seen like... 10,000 power app licenses per app per user or something like that included like they just show up on the list it's kind of like those unlimited licenses you get for power bi user and stuff like that like some companies are getting 10,000 you know power apps per app licenses those work perfectly fine to create non-interactive user accounts, by the way. So whatever Dynamics 365 or Power App license you have, if you have something available, give it that. It doesn't matter what license you use. You just have to give it a license. So I'm going to go ahead and give that license and click Next. And then optional settings, you want to give them administrator or whatever it is. No, I don't, I don't want to do any of that. This is just going to be for integration. I'm going to go ahead and finish adding. So... My uh, user has been created. Obviously, it might take a second or two for that to, you know, synchronize to Dynamics 365. So I'm going to actually go to Dynamics 365, go into the users, and let's see how long it takes. Okay, so now that the user has been synchronized, we're going to move on to step number two. 
So step number two is we're going to open this user account and we're going to scroll all the way to administration. And you notice that the access mode set for the user is read and write. So we want to change that to non-interactive and then we're going to save. All right, so that completes step number two. Now, step number three, we're going to go back into our Office 365 Admin Center. We're going to select the user that we added, and we're going to change the product licenses to remove the license that we gave to this user and save changes. And that's it. Those are the three steps that you need to create a non-interactive user account. I hope you enjoyed today's tip, and we'll see you next week.